Swamiji, can science and religion be reconciled? And if so, how? Science and religion are both aspects of truth. The approach of science is to test a hypothesis and see if it works. The approach of religion should be that, but unfortunately they have made belief the criterion of faith. Belief and faith are different. Belief is the hypothesis. People believed that the world was flat, but when they tried and went far enough, they found out that it's round. So there are many beliefs that people hold that are not valid and that need to be tested. And that's what science has shown us. It's given us a whole new way of thinking about things. It says, test your hypothesis. If you believe in God, then <clears throat> don't be satisfied in believing in him. People believe all kinds of things and still they can, they can believe in love and still act like rapscallions, like villains. So your belief isn't what makes you what you are. Your faith does, but your, because your faith is your actual realization, what you've come to know from experience. So science in religion should be the word instead of experiment, it should be experience. Science and religion in this sense have a lot in common. The one thing that is different and that science can never catch up with is that science can tell you the nature of the atom, but religion, rightly lived, spirituality in other words, and communion with God can help you to become the atom. Or we can put it this way, you can never know an atom outside yourself, but you can trace your own consciousness back to its own source and know all there is to know about this little atom that is you. And that is what religion is all about. Ultimately, the true religion of the universe has to be thought of as self-realization. To realize who you are in yourself is to realize what the self of all creation is. This is why Yogananda called his organization Self-Realization Fellowship. He said that self-realization would in time become known as the religion of the world. He did not mean that organization. He meant that principle. When you have understood one little atom and you can never understand anything except this little atom that is your own sense of I. When you've understood that I to your basic, to your root, gotten rid of the sense of ego and understood that he is that ego, this is why humility is so important, why pride is the greatest obstruction on the spiritual path. It is why <clears throat> we must constantly practice self-effacement in the sense of self-offering um, to the infinite. But once you've understood that he is your true self, you know everything. It has been said that, and this is something my guru taught, that better go to the castle and get to know the owner. He will show you around the grounds, and then you will come to understand everything as it is. But until then, it will be looking at one flower, one bush, You'll never be able to understand everything. And science, by trying to approach reality from the outside, will never be able to reach the core of reality and therefore never be able to understand everything as it truly is. I remember back in about 1960, scientists were seriously saying that they think we know pretty much what the universe is all about now and how it was made. Since then, with quantum physics and all the discoveries that have come, they find they aren't anywhere near understanding it all. You can't understand it with the intellect. And that's another thing that religion gives you. You can understand it through feeling. Because intellect analyzes and separates. Feeling unites. And that's why the definition of yoga is yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Yoga is the neutralization of all the little 
vortices of feeling. 